You're listening to the Mother to Baby podcast, medications and more during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Ask the experts with your host, genetic counselor and mom of three, Chris Stallman. Welcome, welcome to the Mother to Baby podcast. I'm Chris, a mom just like some of you out there currently, or perhaps you're planning a pregnancy or breastfeeding. Either way, you've come to the right place. Mother to Baby is a no-cost service of the nonprofit Organization of Teratology Information Specialists, otherwise known as OTIS. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Mother to Baby is a North American network of professionals who are experts in exposures like medications, beauty products, chemicals, vaccines, pretty much anything you may come in contact with during pregnancy or while breastfeeding. We're here to answer your questions. I mentioned vaccines in that list of topics we answer questions about during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And if you listened to our last episode, episode five, we talked about which vaccines are okay and which aren't during pregnancy. Today, we're going to be focusing on the myths that are out there about receiving vaccines during pregnancy and also if vaccination is okay during breastfeeding. So returning for part two is Dr. Sonia Rasmussen. She is past president of the Society for Birth Defects Research and Prevention, which is formerly known as the Teratology Society. She is also a pediatrician and a clinical geneticist at the University of Florida Health. And our second guest is Carrie Bertrand. She has a master's degree in public health. She works at our California affiliate of Mother to Baby, and she's also a research coordinator for a study looking at exposures in breast milk that's called Mommy's Milk. Ladies, thank you for returning to the show, and I want to jump right in, if I may, starting with Carrie. Carrie, I know you get a ton of questions at Mother to Baby California, but you're also a mom of two young girls, one of which is still an infant. So you're probably interacting with a lot of new moms or moms to be, and of course you've had your own experiences as well. So what are some of the common myths and questions that you hear or that you have? I think I hear um, these sorts of questions all the time from my friends and also at our service. I think um, among my inner circle, some of the things that I often hear is that um, if I get the flu shot, I'm going to get the flu. That is one of those myths that's out there a lot, (laughs) um, that the flu shot can give you the flu. And the flu shot is made up of a killed a killed virus. There, there is no way that killed virus can give you the flu. Now, sometimes people do get sick after getting the flu shot. Sometimes they get some soreness or some achiness. That is one of the side effects, but you can't get the flu itself. Now, sometimes people say, well, I really did get the flu. And what has probably happened, what we believe happened is that they were going to get the flu anyway, then they get the shot, and then they think the shot gave them the flu. It takes a couple weeks to get that vaccine to work, for you to build up those antibodies, for it to protect you. And if you're exposed before then, you can still get the flu. That's why it's really important to get the flu vaccine. Get that flu shot before the flu season starts in your your area. And it still comes up. I think one of the most common things that I hear is that vaccines cause autism. Yeah, I know that there's that thought out there and I think it's really of concern because children are dying because they're not getting vaccines because of this misconception because of this lie Um, really it is something that um, the study that was originally done many many years ago um, has now been retracted from the journal that was it was published in the doctor who published it has had his license taken away there was no it has no evidence there's no good evidence to suggest that vaccines cause autism. And um, so it's really concerning to hear that. And I know, I really truly believe the families that say this believe it, but there is no scientific evidence. And I think we really need to follow the evidence here that vaccines protect kids, they protect moms, they protect babies born to moms. And that's what we need to focus on. We have to focus on the science, not on this this kind of word of mouth kind of thing that goes around um, I, I, I think it's something that's really concerning to many pediatricians like myself. Okay, and if I can switch gears really quickly, what about vaccines and breastfeeding? 
Vaccines are actually safe during breast breastfeeding. They're, um, again, it's a good thing that you can provide antibodies through your breast milk to your baby. And so those uh, antibodies that you're making from the vaccine, that's what, when you get a vaccine, that's what it's doing. It's stimulating your um, immune system to make antibodies and then you pass them to the baby. And so it's actually a way to protect that baby. And that way you don't get sick and then give that to your baby or to the rest of your family. And if a breastfeeding woman gets a vaccine, is there any wait time? Does she need to pump and discard her milk or can she start breastfeeding right away? Not at all. There's no need to wait. She can breastfeed right away afterwards. Because we get asked that all the time on the phones at Mother to Baby Arizona. You know, if we, if a woman does have a vaccine, you know, she feels okay about the vaccine itself, but doesn't know if she can start feeding right away. So I think that too um, is really reassuring to moms. So this has all been very, very informative. Uh, thank you to the two of you so much for your time, your expertise, your personal experience. And before we wrap up for the day, I'd like to know, ladies, for each of you, do you have a final thought that you would like to leave with our audience? Yeah, I think the important thing is, I know how hard it is to be pregnant. I know how you worry about everything that you put in your body when you're pregnant. And that's that's a, a good thing, because there are some things that can be dangerous during pregnancy. But it's r important to remember that there are some things that's important for you to do during pregnancy. And one of those things is to protect your baby by getting certain vaccines during pregnancy, by getting that flu shot, and by getting the Tdap vaccine during pregnancy. That can protect your baby for those first few months of life. I agree. To piggyback, I would say to trust the science, trust the research that's there, and to trust your healthcare provider that you're working closely with and um, really get those vaccines to be able to protect yourself and your baby. Great. Thank you both so much. And the final thought from me today is going to be the same as always. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. We hope that you will join us again in the future. We're going to have some more episodes, more experts, more moms just like you who have questions. And speaking of questions, if you have any questions about vaccines or other exposures in pregnancy or breastfeeding, please remember that Mother to Baby is here to help you answer those. You can find our contact information for phone calls, chatting, text, or email on our website, mothertobaby.org. All of the information is there along with our fact sheets. We're a no-cost, nonprofit service that has a team of experts that are able to answer your questions. So the reason that we have so many different ways for you to contact us is because we want you to be as comfortable as possible when reaching out for your questions. Again, you can find it all at mothertobaby.org. As always, thank you so much for listening. We hope you will join us again in the future. My name is Chris Stallman. It was my pleasure to be with you today. And remember, Mother to Baby is here for you. Take care. Mother to Baby is a service of the nonprofit organization of teratology information specialists and supported by the Health Resources and Services Administration of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's made possible through generous donations from listeners like you. To learn more about Mother to Baby, please visit mothertobaby.org.